So who am I? I'm a civil engineer from, uh, so my interest was in biology and nature and, and um, the environment. And so I, I started in, I saw environmental engineering in, that was in civil engineering at Polytechnic Montreal, where I did my undergrad studies. And then I worked for two years and then uh, thought that I needed to get more information. So and for my grad studies, so I went to do a master and a PhD at the University of British Columbia and uh, working on biological nutrient removal, which joined my interest of biology, nature, science, and wastewater treatment as a, for, uh, to, to protect the environment and, and in the important field of water, water quality. And so, and then I, after that, I did the postdoc in solar radiation, solar bioradiation, uh, while I was a professor at the University of Quebec in Montreal. And since 1992, I've been a professor at Polytechnic Montreal. I just retired this year in January, so I'm now an adjunct professor for at least three okay. more years to continue some research activities and some volunteering activities, such as contributing to the organization of the International Water Association World Water Congress held today and following day in okay. Toronto, and some at other activities in Quebec with the Réseau Environnement. Right. Aside from your professional, because this is maybe some of those information about your professional uh, love a level we will know about it but we want to know about more about the himself your childhood um, you're starting thinking about the environmental how was your childhood how was your high school uh, days well something that we did with my parents was go to to nature like hiking and okay. going to the beach in south carolina and the other places along the east coast and so we, uh, so I was always interested in nature and animals and plants and, uh, and birds in particular. So I, I kept this interest uh, <laughs> throughout my life and uh, finding a profession where I could uh, work with passion. I like music also. I played piano for a number of years. Oh, that's so the, and so. And piano is interesting in the sense that or any activity that you do where you try to, to perfectionate, if I can say that, or yes. to improve the quality of your work by refining, by... Uh, yes. Studying more actively is an ability that that spreads uh, wow. in your profession and in your life as well. And so, and one of the characteristics of doing grad studies and working in the field of environmental engineering is that you can work with passion in this field and contribute to the development of, um, of the quality of the environment. So, have you ever thought when you were a child and watching those nature and those things that you're going to be an environment specialist? Environment, maybe. Wastewater treatment, no. <laughs> that, that came as, uh, yes, by accident, because I saw that there were, there were some needs in this field. And so, yes. and I saw that also in joined my interest of uh, biology, biological wastewater treatment, and uh, water quality. So that's why I'm, I found the interest. And so, you know, one uh, message that I tell my students, some students tell me that uh, I, they, they want to find a job that they like. Okay. I tell them it's much better to like the job that you do. Okay. See the difference. Something. Yeah, people also will say like what you are doing until you get <laughs> to do what you like. Yeah. So at first you need to like what you are doing now until the moment comes to do what you uh, what you like. Yeah. So instead of looking forever for something that you like, you just like what you do, do it well, and then eventually you become to like what you do. Okay. So when was that? that kind of moment that you felt that, oh, I want to be an expert on uh, wastewater uh, treatment in general? Well, I was working as a, for a consulting firm and doing okay. some supervision of construction of, the, of a, 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 a building. And then I told my supervisor that I, that was interesting. I liked the experience, but they, I would prefer if it could be related to environmental aspects. Okay. And then he said, okay, uh, I'll tell the boss. And uh, so you won't work with me anymore. Then <laughs> I, I was uh, I was sent to another project, where, which was a, an Ayrton Lagoon construction. Okay. I had no idea how this was built, how it was designed. And so I figured that I needed to have a, a graduate degree in environmental engineering. Mm-hmm. And I applied to... Oh, to three universities, the University of Toronto, Edmonton, and, and British Columbia. I was accepted in all of them. Okay. And, but my wife is a met, is a weather forecaster for Environment Canada, and she was okay. sent to Vancouver, so that's why I ended up there. And so and so um, so my with my job working as a young engineer in, yes. in uh, 
supervising the construction of Veritable Lagoons. That's how I ended up studying wastewater engineering. So you work as a, uh, you know, as an uh, engineer from a construction company, and then you move to environmental the consulting company. Consulting consulting company. Have you thought about you're going to move to academia and you be a professor, or just like your career that okay, I'm going to have my own consulting company? And well, a rich man. And <laughs> well, being rich was not my objective. <laughs> oh, okay, but I, but I wanted to do something that I like, and okay. the, and the uh, my interest was in becoming a consultant, and it's my accident that I became a professor. Because oh. my when I was doing that, that was a my purpose. I wanted to become a consultant. What a good accident for <laughs> us. <laughs> yes. And and one thing that I wanted to do that I've always liked to do is, um, I remember one one event when I was a young engineer, when I asked the the senior engineer how these aerial lagoons were designed, he said, oh, look in this book. That oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And I said, well, well, that's not the way I'd like to share information. <laughs> and so finally, I, in grad studies, I, I studied this book. Yes. The wastewater engineering book, the old one, the, yeah. so, uh, version number two. So we're oh, okay. version five now. <laughs> and, the, yes. and then, uh, and, and so I, I studied to become a proficient at an okay. environmental engineering designer. And so, yeah. <laughs> And then when I w was completing my PhD, a professor from uh, Polytechnic Montreal, Raymond Desjardins, said, oh, there's an opening at the University of Quebec in Montreal for a position in, in, oh. uh, in uh, environmental engineering. And so I applied and got the job, and then, then the postdoc, and then after that, a position open at Polytechnic. And I had more interest in going to Polytechnic than remaining at the University of Quebec in Montreal, because oh. it's a science program there. And whereas Polytechnic is an engineering program, and so you were, uh, students were not very much interested in, in the design of treatment plants, but understanding how it went, whereas at Polytechnic really want to know how to design plants, and that was my interest. And so I, since 1992, I've been at the Polytechnic Montreal, just retired so with 33, <laughs> 32 years. Oh, what a, what a journey. Yeah, but it looks like you are enjoying your your time you're during your study, you, because well, you are doing it with passion. Yeah, and I like to share. So oh, if I, if things I know, I like to share them. And if somebody does not better than me, great. I've done a good job of training them. So that's fantastic. And that's why I encourage my students to become to become experts in their own field. So I make sure I encourage them to be the specialist of reference in their field so that they can become world leaders if not yes. in their own field. And they can add value. Yeah. So... <clears throat> I believe there are many people that is uh, influence your, your career and your life. Uh, if we focus on the graduate study time when you are doing your master or your PhD, definitely there was many instructors, many professors. Mm -hmm. uh, who was your favorite professor during that <laughs> study? Yeah, well, there were two professors when I was a graduate student, student, but there was one in particular when it was an undergrad in my okay. last year of undergrad, and this person is Gilles Patry. Gilles Patrier was a, a, a temporary professor for at Polytech Montreal. He was hired full time because two professors were working in uh, in Africa. And they okay. were going to come back later. So, but he taught, and the way he taught, the structure, the way he presented his material, being very structured, and the exercises we had to do to understand the processes, I very much like his approach, and uh, he's been a reference. And Gilles Patrier. After the, 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 when the, the professors came back, he went to the University of uh, McMaster, stayed there for a number of years, then went back to the University of Ottawa, became rector of the university. Okay. And uh, he has a, had a brilliant career. So he is the professor that influenced me most when I was an undergrad student. He's a brilliant pro. So are you using the same technique that you are trying to uh, adapt the way that he's teaching? That was my son. Okay. I'm okay. Very that's uh, that, that, that's awesome. awesome. I'm not sure I do it as well as he did, but <laughs> he, he certainly inspired. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when I was a grad student, two professors who were my co-supervisors were okay. Ken Hall and Bob Hancock. Ken Hall was an organic chemist and Bob Hancock a microbiologist. And mm. so they taught me how to do science and how to write in English, scientific okay. writing in English. I'm French, originally, so <laughs> okay. writing was a bit of a challenge. And uh, so, and uh, even speaking was a bit of a challenge. If English is your second language, <laughs> so is mine. And it's interesting to note that at this conference, the official language is broken English. 
<laughs> yes, I, <laughs> I like that broken English because it's a multicultural conference coming from all the world, so we we have a multi language. We so. each have an accent. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned your co-supervisor was those kind of two people that is really inspired or has an impact on your career. How was your relation with your co-supervisors? Well, there it was a relation of confidence and the, yeah. and freedom. The, oh, and okay. so they let me do what I what I thought was interesting. Say so they encouraged me to to do some research, literature review, but they never pushed me. They just wanted me to become a good uh, a good student, professional, eventually, and uh, that. That clicked for me, so I, I like this freedom and the, the way. I remember Bob Hengaki is, is one of the top-notch uh, microbiologists in the world. Okay. So, and this guy had no time for me. When I would meet him, I I knew I had some microbiology problem. So yes. I had some phenomena I couldn't explain. And I like to understand, find the why and the how. And so I, I went to meet him and he, uh, I remember he said, what's up? And so this guy, <laughs> six foot four. Okay. And, and athletic uh, you know, guy. Basketball player? Or? Uh, well, he was a, um, a swimmer. On the, okay. On oh, the yes. team of Australia. So uh, I agree. Very fit guy. And, uh, but very intense scientifically. And so he didn't have much time. So I had to really... And, and the way he spoke to me, like he, he was looking at me so intensively, oh, intensely, that I had the impression that he was reading in my mouth <laughs> rather than listening to my words. <laughs> so, and, and would correct me. And, uh, yeah. and I learned some rigor in the way I learned to communicate with him. So he was very very helpful. And then when I asked him some information about phenomena I observed, like, which had an incredible the reference in his mind. And so he would look to his files and find information pertinent. So he was very instrumental very. in art. Uh, in the success of my uh, master and PhD, and there was one more person that is that was very influential is Bill Oldham. This guy was uh, when was recruited by consultants to help design the Kelowna wastewater treatment plant, which was an enhanced biological phosphorus removal plant with James Barnard. And this is okay. James Barnard from South Africa, and so he had brought James Barnard from South Africa, help with consultants to design this plant, and they, and he had a pilot plant that were at UBC to study these phenomena. And so I was involved with the work at that pilot plant to understand better this mechanism of enhanced phosphorus removal. Enhanced phosphorus removal that became enhanced biological phosphorus removal. Oh, okay. At the time there was a discussion, is it physical, biological? Yeah. So physical chemical, so. Physical chemical. And then, so so Bill Oldham was very influential in uh, in allowing me to work with, on this topic. Okay. So if you got a chance to say something to them after this long time, what do you want to say? Well, thank you for the freedom and the, to explore and for the confidence you had in me and letting me experiment <laughs> in, a, in a number of things. And uh, so they, they were not directing me in the details of the experiment, but uh, orienting me into the, in the field. And uh, yeah. I remember one day, Bill Oldham said, well, there's no more research needed in this field. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, there, were, there are still some aspects that need to be researched. Well, yeah. 